Hi, my name is Richard Lander. I'm a Principal Program Manager Lead on the .NET team. Lately, I've been focused on the .NET Core cross-platform and open source project. That's what I'm going to talk with you about today. .NET Core is a new version of .NET that we've made available to you. It addresses a lot of customer feedback that we've received over the years. At its most general, .NET Core is an API spec. It defines a set of types that will become the new generation of portable class libraries. It includes the async HTTP client type and array list. .NET Core is also an implementation of that API spec. That means that you can write code using those APIs and expect your code to run anywhere .NET Core does, on Windows or Linux, for example. .NET Core has a flexible architecture. It is intended to be very general purpose, so that it can be used in many places. At the same time, we sometimes decide to build an optimized implementation too. This is the case with .NET Native. It's a variant of .NET Core and uses most of the general purpose .NET Core libraries to target both the universal Windows platform on Windows and now native executables on Linux, OS X, and Windows. .NET Core installs as an app local component by default. That means that each app gets its own version and there are no versioning conflicts. That change is directly based on customer feedback. You can install .NET Core as a shared component too, used by multiple apps. There's lots of choice. Tools are an important part of the story. Both Visual Studio 2015 and Visual Studio Code support .NET Core. VS 2015 already has great support for .NET Core debugging, and it's coming soon to VS Code. We are releasing a new set of command line tools. You can think of these as power user tools if you'd like. They are similar in nature to the Go and Node command line tools. Now, pivoting a little to higher level aspects, .NET Core is open source. That's very important to some people. It's very important to us at Microsoft. It's changed our development approach completely. We've been more than a little surprised at how much the community has jumped in and improved the product. We're glad that they can help, and it directly improves your experience with the product. Very related, we use an open development process, or maybe I should say we strive towards it. We publish design notes, we also hold some design meetings on Google Hangouts, and we'll do more. Open source is shared ownership. It just is. At the same time, Microsoft is a huge contributor to the product. We do want to see .NET Core grow in terms of users, contributors, and other .NET companies using it. There can be more project sponsors. We'd love to see that. There are multiple workloads that run on .NET Core. We've already covered them, but it's good to list them out. Universal Windows platform apps use .NET Core in the form of .NET Native. ASP.NET 5 is a web and services framework that runs on top of .NET Core on Windows, Linux, and OS X. It abstracts the base OS so that you can write one app that runs without modification on those OSs. Native executables are a new addition. We've been working with the .NET native technology for Windows apps for a while and realized that we could reuse it for native executables. In fact, our base tests have always run as native executables. It's a natural next step for that technology. When we have a great beta, we'll release it so that you can try it out. The primary use case is something like the Git tool. If you wanted to write a tool like that in .NET and wanted your users just to think of it as a native executable, like it had been written in C++, then this new option would be great for you. Let's take a look at a demo. First, what we're going to do is look at an ASP.NET 5 application in Visual Studio 2015. I've already created the application. Uh, this one's called Web Application 7. And all I'm going to do here is go to Properties and change it from a .NET Framework app, which is the default for ASP.NET 5, and change it to .NET Core. So all we do is select that, change the platform, and then what we're going to do is run the app, load it up Microsoft Edge, and you can see this ASP.NET 5 app is actually running on .NET Core. OK, now we're on Linux, uh, Ubuntu, actually. We're SSH'd into a terminal session on this Linux machine. And you can see we can type familiar Unix commands like ls. And we have a number of uh, .NET Core source artifacts here, like program.cs and project.json. What we're going to do is native compile this app to a single executable, and we're going to use the new .NET tools in order to do that. 
So the tools all start with the .NET command. We can type that. It shows you some help. At the moment, we only have a few commands implemented, but uh, several more commands will be coming. The .NET tool actually just coordinates these commands in order to build something useful for you. So let's start by compiling our application. If we actually just type .NET compile, it will compile that application to an IL, DLL, like you're used to on Windows, and we could run it. But we also have the native compilation option, which does the same thing as what we just saw, but in addition, compiles to native code for the target platform. And now we have a native compiled app. So let's take a look at that. Here we go. So now what you see is a single file called .NET bot. For those of you that aren't familiar, we don't use .exe extensions on Unix operating systems. That's a Windows thing. So it's just .NET bot, no file extension. We see that it's 1.8 megabytes. So what's included in there is the core runtime, uh, .NET Core runtime, any .NET Core class libraries that you depended on, and obviously the user code. So let's actually run the app. Here we go. And it, this one takes a, uh, a message, hello from connect. And we type that, and you see it gives the message, and it prints out a pretty picture in ANSI art of .NET Bot, which is the mascot for our open source project. And uh, you can see that it launched very quickly. And uh, we'll be continuing to add many, many more scenarios onto this. I hope you liked what you saw, and you can start building .NET Core apps today in Visual Studio 2015 and Visual Studio Code. The .NET Core open source project on GitHub has been really successful. Even if you don't consider yourself an open source developer, it's great to see what Microsoft and the community are doing together to move .NET forward. Thanks for watching, and thanks for being part of the .NET community.